Here's our data from the caffeinated concept testing. Remember that each row contains the responses of one person, and each column contains the responses for one question. Let's look at the responses to the purchase intent questions for the seven concepts. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the data. And below the last row of data, we'll look at averages and tallies. When consumers responded to this online survey, they were asked, how likely would you be to purchase a product based on this idea? And then the answers, the options they had to answer were phrases like, Number one was, I would definitely not purchase it. There were five responses. From one to five is, I definitely would purchase it. So we can look at the average over all the responses. Notice that some people didn't answer. I'm scrolling all the way up to the top of the data. I don't want to get the headers in there, though. So I got 150 rows. And I'm going to lock the starting and ending row of the data. So I can use that again in other calculations. Like in a tally, I'll use a count if. So in that data, how many of those responses are a 1? And I wrote that formula so that I can drag it. So I locked the starting and ending row of the data, and then I locked a column for the tally, for what I want to tally. So in this formula, I want to count how many of the cells in this range had this value. And as I said, I wrote that formula so I can drag it. So there were six people who responded to say that they definitely would buy the caffeinated chocolate bar. And all of these formulas are written so they can be dragged for the seven concepts. And I don't need that many decimal places. I'm going to reduce that. In the module, you'll look at these tallies, you'll look at averages, and you'll make some graphs. These are purchase intent responses for the caffeinated cookies.